We have two left in this round, and then we'll be back this afternoon as well with five new companies. So next up, from Los Angeles, California, we have Parallel Health. Presenting for Parallel Health is Dr. Nathan Brown and Natalie Robinson. Give them a round of applause and bring them on out. My name is Natalie Kalea Robinson, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Parallel Health. In the world of precision health, I don't follow trends, I set them. You've likely all taken antibiotics at least once in your life. Strep throat, stomach infections, skin issues. We know that antibiotics have saved our lives full stop. But we also know that taking too many antibiotics can pose a danger to our health because of side effects as well as antimicrobial resistance. Let's go to presentation. The World Health Organization says that antimicrobial resistance is a top 10 global health threat in the world facing humanity. And by 2050, over 10 million people will die from an antibiotic resistant infection. Enter Parallel. Parallel is a precision phage platform leveraging testing using whole genome sequencing, robotics, automation, and big data machine learning and AI. Phages are microbes that infect bacteria. You can think of them like antibiotics, except they're natural and they're precise. They're like precise assassins that kill the bad bacteria, but leave the good bacteria alone. Phages were discovered in the early 1900s, and scientists and doctors at that time used them to treat illnesses like cholera and dysentery, but they didn't have the sequencing tools to produce them efficiently. And then, in the 1920s, we, the Western world, found antibiotics, and they worked. They killed everything. And we also realized they were cheap to produce, so we left phage therapy behind. But with the rise of antimicrobial resistance, scientists like those at Parallel have used phage therapy to save lives under the FDA's emergency use authorization. Today, Parallel has created a platform that is applicable to many areas of human health. We're starting in skin. Why? Dermatologists are actually the number one prescribers of antibiotics across healthcare. I met my co-founder, Dr. Nathan Brown, at a skincare startup where we both worked, and we brought to market the first ever phage-based serum targeting C. acnes bacteria. And here's what we learned. When we brought it to market, it worked incredibly well for a certain cohort of people. We were able to get people off of Accutane and antibiotics, and yet in another cohort, it didn't hurt them, it just didn't do anything. And so to understand this discrepancy, we sequenced their skin microbiome, and we learned that in this first cohort, they had an overgrowth of C. acnes, which totally made sense because our serum targeted C. acnes. And in the other cohort, these people had an overgrowth of other types of bacteria, Asorius, Pseudomonas, sometimes it was fungi or mites. And what we recognized was that if we were going to bring a precision serum or solution to market, we better have a test, and we were going to need a ton of data. So we joined the Illumina Accelerator, where we amassed the largest database on the skin microbiome to date using whole genome sequencing. Today, we're introducing our skin microbiome discovery kit and custom phage serums. I'd like to pan to the kiosk where Katie will show us how this works. This is our skin microbiome discovery kit. And unlike others that use only one swab, we have four swabs in the kit. It turns out your forehead microbiome might be very well different than your chin microbiome. We also include a control that allows us to control for microbes in the room. Now, once Katie finishes swabbing, she's gonna send those swabs back to our lab. Now, let's go to the Zoom live feed. Now, we use robotics and automation to prep the sample, and then we sequence. Unlike others that use 16S technology, we use a more advanced technology called whole genome sequencing. And in addition to bacteria, we can also see viruses and fungi, even mites. We then use a proprietary 
a unique algorithm to categorize your skin microbiome, and we also use a, a, a spike um, to be quantitative. Our test is so thorough that we can even see when you have antibiotic resistance genes in your bacteria, as well as viruses that have been associated with non-melanoma skin cancer. Now, we can't report on those results just yet, but here's what we can tell you. Let's go to demo. Here's our Katie, Katie's results. We can see her skin microbiome type, her skin age, hydration levels, diversity score, an outline of good and bad bacteria, as well as recommendations on food ingredients, skincare ingredients, as well as her phage serum that's right for her. Let's go back to presentation. Parallel has defined eight different skin microbiome types and formulated eight different formulations. We produce phages by leveraging our biobanks of over 10,000 bacterial, phage, and fungal strains. We use a, a rapid discovery process as well as high throughput screening to select the phages that are appropriate. Let's go back to the live feed on Zoom. We use bioreactors to produce and scale phages at extremely high titer, and that's really important to reach and maintain efficacy. Let's go back to presentation. Parallel has a wait list of over 6,000 people, five patents pending, and an LOI from a Fortune 500 company to develop novel ingredients. When scaled beyond skin to other areas of human health and therapeutics, Parallel projects revenue potential of over $5 billion by 2030. On Parallel's leadership team, our team features world-class experts across science, medicine, big data, AI, engineering, and business. So sorry that we're out of time. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you so much. Give a round of applause. Okay, Rebecca, let's start with you. Oh, with me. Um, yeah, so as the mother of two teenagers, I'm super interested in this because it seems like Accutane is like the magic bullet and is not so magic, right? So I'd love to hear a little bit about defensibility. I, I heard about the five patents. I'm not sure what those cover, but how, how defensible is this technology if it's been around since pre-antibiotic, right? Well, you can't patent natural products. Exactly. Under Section I'm a patent lawyer as well. So. Excellent. So, <laughs> so you'll, you'll, yes. you'll speak this language. But uh, you can uh, patent the combinations, the formulations, and that turns out to be very important okay. in stabilizing these products. That's what I was wondering, stability, and then do you have to keep them cold? Like how, what's the We state? don't. They're room temperature. Oh, I That's oh, part I of the magic, yeah. Very good. I and need this. cost, like what does this cost, right? To the, re to the consumer? To or? the consumer. Um, so currently, uh, our starter kits are between uh, 380 to five, to almost $500 as a starter kits, and that gives you your test and products together. Okay. Um, but we're working on a subscription model that allows users to pay anywhere from $150 to $195 a month, and that includes testing. Got it. Very good. Thank you. Uh, I think, you know... Uh, Consumers, at the end of the day, buy for problems they have. Uh, and I think as we learned with kind of the Web3 chapter, care a lot less about how we're doing things from a technical standpoint and care a lot about what we're solving. Uh, am I understanding right that kind of the first problem you guys are focused on is like acne, basically, as like the, the key thing? Or like, it, am I wrong? Or what does that roadmap look like? Acne is really just one area of th that is a very obvious use case. It's low-hanging fruit. Um, but we also look at rosacea, melasma. We're looking at aging very heavily. What phages do really well is reduce inflammation, which we all have. And so we're focusing in, in these areas to begin with. That makes sense. I think from a positioning standpoint, it's tough for me to get really excited about like rubbing phages on my face. It's easier for me to get excited about like aging my skin more slowly or fixing my acne. So I think that positioning is uh, super important. Thanks. Thank you. Guru? How do you think about the go-to-market here? Um, what percentage of the population goes to a dermatologist and trusts them versus buying directly? And how do you think about going direct versus going through doctors? It's an open question for us right now. We've done a lot of market studies, um, a lot of testing. We are making our, our products available direct to consumer and direct to patient. Um, the other thing that I didn't really focus on in this presentation is that we also offer personalized prescriptions. So we really look at meeting the customer where they are and, and where, 
in terms of wherever they, whatever they need, we can be there for them. Because really it's based on their unique microbiome. Um, but to, to answer your question, in terms of dermatologist clinics, we're also putting together pilot programs this quarter working with estheticians, med spas, and derm clinics. So we'll see how, where the proportion lies. We don't know yet, but we're open, very open to that possibility. Surabhi? Yeah, so you mentioned this is a phage platform and you had some other clinical indications up. Do you have data in any other clinical indication outside of skin, which is pretty crowded? No data, but ambitions, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, do you have a top contender? And if so, how would that change your business model? Because with skin, you can be direct to consumer, but I assume with some of the others, you can't. What are you mean beyond dermatology? Correct, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we can tell you we're, we're still filing our, our patent disclosures, um, mm -hmm. but our first lead indication is actually a neurological condition. Okay. Do you have to, be, because it's a naturally occurring thing, because we were in like um, second genome, right? Do you have to go through the whole FDA thing here? Uh, not if you don't claim to cure a disease. So exactly. we're talking about diseases, but when okay. we talk to the consumer, we talk about skin appearance. Yes. Or okay. the appearance of acne-prone skin. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Thank you. Too. So if, if the science works, I think world's an oyster. So like, help me understand what is the percentage of acne conditions you can actually successfully cure? and like, do you cure them and then you don't need the product anymore or you need the product all the time to maintain, you know, good appearance? So what we've seen is you need to maintain a good skin microbiome. And there's been a lot learned about acne in particular that suggests that it can pop up at any moment. Um, so there's a maintenance component. Um, and, you know, I think um, what we've seen with percentage of acne conditions, there's some confusion about what acne is, especially on the part of the consumer. Um, they don't know what it is. So the test educates them about what acne is and what it isn't. Even um, uh, primary care physicians have trouble. Dermatologists are pretty good about distinguishing, for example, between a certain um, folliculitis caused by, you know, non-cutobacterium or acne caused by cutobacterium. So um, y y we're just kind of um, democratizing that information. Yeah. And the percentage of, you know, just like cases that you can treat Percentage, um, we can, we, we've seen results with people who have severe acne. So um, everybody who has acne, we, we can address. Yeah. And just to add to that, cystic acne, hormonal acne, we've, we've seen it across the spectrum. Yeah. How do you benchmark to Accutane and results, efficacy? Well, we haven't done that study yet. We need to do that study. Um, but we believe we can, we can out-compete. Um, we've seen results within, for severe cystic acne, yeah. Uh, within two to three months, and that's just waiting for the lesions to heal. So it's probably working immediately. As, you know, as microbes that multiply, um, they work pretty fast. <laughs> nice. yeah. Well, thank you very much. We're out of time. Give a round of applause. Thank, thank you very much. I can tell you, I, I, I need that. That's, that's good.